and welcome to this video where I'll attempt to unravel the law associated with the Isle of Sipta. The story of the island is complicated and encompasses three separate waves of settlement. For this reason this video is broken down into the following principal chapters. The story of the Elder Races, the coming of the Acheronians, the Grey Ones and the First Men, the colony of the Stygians and the archaeology of Sipta. There will also be a final summation that looks at the current state of the island. I hope you enjoy it. I don't have all the answers, but I think I have some of them. According to the law, the Isle of Sipta is in the Western Ocean, off the shores of Stygia, a few days southwest of the Stygian port of Kemi. Traditionally, the isle has been placed around here, just south of the uninhabited island of Akbet. The island is named after Sipta, a powerful sorcerer who lived in a tower on the island. From here he summoned storms that wrecked passing ships, unless their captains paid him a tribute. The necessity of paying such a tribute would make sense if the island was close to the mainland, and therefore difficult to avoid. But we know that the Elder Races chose the island as a refuge, and, as such, we might expect Sipta's island to be further from the shore. Added to this is the fact that the placing of Sipta's isle on this map is almost directly south of Kemi, rather than to the southwest. Bearing this in mind, it might be worthwhile to look at some of the other islands known to be in the area to see if they are better candidates. To the extreme west we have the island of the Twelve-Eyed Thing. This is too far from Stygia to be a credible location. The same might be true for the Isle of the Black One, though there is some evidence to support the idea that this is Sipta's island, and we'll examine that theory in more detail later on. The next two islands, Death Island and the Isle of Hidden Gold, are both also directly west of Stygia rather than to the southwest, so these can also be discounted. The only significant island that is southwest of Stygia is the Nameless Isle, though in the lore this island is also the location of the Temple of the Toad God, Sathagua, a structure that is not seen on Sipta's island. In any case, the Nameless Isle is so far south, it's closer to the shores of the Black Coast than Stygia so most people discount it as a possible location. However, there are some map makers who do place the Isle of Sipta in this area, so we should not ignore it completely. The Elder Races are the builders of the tower and the vaults and various other ancient structures found on the island. Once all powerful, the Elder Races are now apparently in terminal decline, degenerate remnants of their former selves. So who are the Elder Races and where do they come from? To answer that, we have to go back to the very beginning of life on Earth. According to the law, all life was created by the Demiurge, the sentient life force of the Earth itself, a being whose numerous offspring became the first inhabitants of the planet. The Demiurge spawned many descendants, but for our purposes only three of them are important. These are Set, the Serpent God, Cothon, the Dark Shadow, and Gaia, the Earth Mother. Of these three, both Set and Cthon grew corrupt. They became demonic and in turn spawned monstrous offspring of their own. It was Set who spawned the Serpent Men, his worshippers, who in this tale are the most significant of the Elder Races. In contrast, Cthon was far more prolific and gave rise to the Wolfmen, the Harpies, the Bat Demons, the Goblins and the Broodlings of Cthon, the latter being similar to the Deep Ones the degenerate fishmen usually associated with the worship of the sea god Dagon. Lastly we have Gaia, the Earth Mother, who, though not corrupted like her brothers, still managed to spawn Om, the Spider God, who in turn gave rise to the race of the Spider People, represented on Septa by the Demon Spiders, otherwise known as the Outsiders. This gives us seven of the eight Elder Spawn found on the Isle of Septa. The origins of the last, the Fiends, is less clear, However, they are similar in appearance to another of Cthon's offspring, the demonic Nagari, so it's likely they're closely related. After their creation, the Elder Spawn infested planet Earth for millennia, harrying and enslaving the First Men as they gradually evolved from their ape-like ancestors. Despite their bondage, the First Men gradually grew stronger, then powerful enough to rise up against their masters. After a savage war, the Elder Spawn were destroyed on the mainland, and the few remnants who survived fled to the refuge we now know as the Isle of Sipta. The lore globes of the Elder Vaults tell the story of the Elder Spawn. 
Having escaped the mainland, the spawn were fearful that humans would follow them to the island, so they combined their resources to build the tower, a structure that could be used to summon a maelstrom that both hid the islands and wrecked any ship that came too close. The Elder Spawn also built huge lay shrines, one for each race, and these were used to summon human captives from the mainland. Unfortunates who would become slaves, sacrificial victims, and ultimately food for their demonic masters. Thus satisfied, the Elder Spawn lived out their long years of exile, secure on their island stronghold. This grim confederation might have continued indefinitely, however it was ultimately betrayed by the treachery of the Serpent Men. The Serpent Men learned that some of their brethren had escaped the massacre of the mainland and built a thriving colony inside a volcano. Unable to breed, the Serpent Men of Sipta had become resigned to the slow stagnation of their race, so they grasped this new opportunity with eagerness. However, entry to the mainland's volcano colony came at a price, and to buy their passage the Serpent Men had to bring with them a valuable offering. It's not clear what dictated their choice, but the offering chosen by the Serpent Men was a powerful artifact known as the Shining Trapezohedron, a large gem that was the source of the tower's magic. The Serpent Men stole the Trapezohedron and took it to the mainland, leaving some of their companions behind to allay the suspicions of the other races. However, once the gem was taken, the tower could no longer function. The Lay Shrine ceased to work, and, as the supply of human slaves ran out, the Elder Spawn started a bitter civil war over their few remaining resources. The war was a foolish distraction, as, with the tower inert, the island protection, the Maelstrom, could no longer be summoned, and it was not long before the humans of the mainland launched an invasion fleet, their intention to destroy the last of the Elder Spawn once and for all. In desperation, the Elder Spawn reunited and called on the gods of the Outer Void for help. The Dark Gods obliged, and a new crystal was formed, one that rekindled the Maelstrom and destroyed the human invaders. But the Elder Spawn had forged the crystal in haste. The gem was imperfect, and the Maelstrom grew uncontrollable, scouring the land indiscriminately, destroying the Spawn and their works, as well as the vengeful humans. Almost everything was obliterated. The only buildings of the Spawn to survive the chaos were those on the southern island, but even those were left in ruins. Aside from the destructive power of the storm itself, the flawed gem also drew down eldritch monsters from the frigid outer void, creatures that even the Elder Spawn could not overcome. To escape destruction, the Elder Spawn parted company once more, each building vaults that could withstand the power of the Maelstrom and keep them safe from its horrors. But this salvation came at a price. Without the Lay Shrines to provide them with food, the Elder Spawn faced starvation. Rather than go hungry, they entered a deep hibernation and waited for better times. Sometime after the restoration of the Maelstrom, a great cataclysm struck the continent of Thuria. The land was completely reshaped, and the original seven empires of men were cast down. Amongst the hardest hit were the Lemurians, who saw their homeland vanish beneath the waves. The survivors of Lemuria went west to the mainland, where they were enslaved for many thousands of years. Eventually they overthrew their masters who, in turn, fled west themselves, where they mingled with the inhabitants of Old Stygia to found a new civilization, the sinister and powerful Witch Kingdom of Acheron, a land of dark and terrible magic. What little we know of the Acheronian settlement on the Isle of Sipta is contained in the ruins of the great city of Zotl, and the inscriptions found on 13 proclamation obelisks, 13 great slabs of stone carved with script devoted to the city's founder, Xanarus, who by his own account was the wisest, most devoted and boldest of all the Acheronian nobility. It's not said what attracted the Acheronians to the island in the first place, but it's possible they were intrigued by the remains left by the Elder Spawn and recognised the power of the magic they must have commanded. It's also unclear how long the Acheronian settlement lasted. According to the Law Stones, it did not survive much longer than Xanarus himself. However, since we have no idea how long the Sorcerer King lived, the Acheronians could have been on the island for many hundreds of years. Whatever the timescale, the Proclamation Obelisks allow us to sketch out the fate of this doomed people. 
The first two obelisks tell us of the arrival of Xanarus on the island, at which point he claims the tower and the vaults and the maelstrom itself. Since settlement of the island is obviously possible at this time, we can assume that the fury of the maelstrom has largely burnt itself out and that it is now relatively weak, or at least very infrequent. This would be consistent with the idea that the power of the tower's flawed gem is slowly fading over time. Interestingly, the proclamations don't mention the monstrosities of the Maelstrom, another indication that the influence of the Tower has declined significantly and that the Maelstrom is now a shadow of its former self. The next two obelisks tell of Xanarus building the city of Zotl, with a temple of Set at its centre. It is almost certain that the temple referred to is, in fact, the Vault of the Serpent Men, but that Xanarus was unaware of its purpose and believed it to be a shrine devoted to the ancient serpent god. This theory is supported by the fact that the Vault of the Serpent Men is surrounded by Acheronian structures that have clearly been built to incorporate it. Obelisks 5 and 6 reveal that Xanarus has learned of the presence of serpent men on the island and that he is alarmed to find these ancestral enemies of humankind living within his city. The obelisks also refer to the appearance of other members of the Elder Spawn, which they refer to as beasts and birdmen. It's likely that the presence of the Acheronians has woken the Elder Spawn from their long sleep, and they are emerging from their vaults to feed on the new bounty provided by the settlers. Obelisks 7 and 8 speak of Xanarus' struggles to keep the Elder Spawn at bay, but the Acheronians appear to be losing their fight against the ancient races. Xanarus is now desperate to enter the tower, perhaps realising that accessing this monument is the key to controlling the island. In Obelisk 9, Xanarus attempts to retain a hold on his people, but his authority is crumbling. The island now appears to be cut off from the mainland, and Xanarus has finally realised that the vaults are the lairs of his enemies. In Obelisks 10 and 11, Xanarus declares his independence from Acheron, he blames Acheron for not sending aid to help battle his enemies, but he also appears to be losing his grip on reality. The final two obelisks reveal Xanarus' belief that a conjunction of the planets will open the tower to him. Perhaps this was a delusion, perhaps not. But in any event, it is too late, for the inhabitants of the city are quickly overcome and destroyed by nightmarish forms. The settlers are exterminated, leaving behind only the animated skeletons of their foot soldiers and guards. Miserable remnants doubtless raised from the dead by residual magic seeping from the stones of the ruins. Once the Acheronians were destroyed, the Elder Spawn appear to have retreated to their vaults to resume their slumber. It's not clear why they didn't attempt to reclaim the island once again. Perhaps the Gem of the Tower was now too weak to power the Lay Shrines and provide them with sustenance. Whatever the reason, they returned to their underground refuges and closed the doors behind them leaving the surface to the few unfortunate humans who still manage to cling to existence on the cursed island. But it's not only humans who live on the surface. There are others here too, a people whose place in the history of the island is still unclear. These are the Grey Ones. The Grey Ones of Sipta are very similar to another race mentioned in the lore, a people known as the Black Ones a race of fierce ebony giants whose culture centred on an ancient magical pool. Given their obvious similarities, the Grey Ones and the Black Ones must surely be connected in some way, perhaps as different branches of the same tribe. We have already mentioned the Isle of the Black One. This is their only known location, and it's possible that this island and the Isle of Sipta are the same, though, as stated earlier, the reported location of the Isle of the Black One does not tally with the description we have for Sipta's island. In the lore, the Black Ones take captives to their sacred pool and fling them into its green waters, where a grotesque process turns their victim's flesh into shrunken grey stone. These gruesome statues are then kept as trophies. On the Isle of Sipta, many similar statues are also found, the mysterious figurines, most being representations of the otherworldly horrors that emerge from the Maelstrom. However, on Sipta we see this grim process only in the reverse. When a mysterious figurine is taken to the pools of the Grey Ones, the water erupts and liberates whatever creatures were captured in the stone in the first place. But where did the Grey Ones come from, and for how long have they lived on the island? 
The law suggests an extraterrestrial origin for the Black Ones, possibly the same void that excretes the horrors of the Maelstrom onto the island. There are no mysterious figurines that capture any of the Elder Spawn. This suggests that the Grey Ones arrived during one of the Elder Spawn's long periods of hibernation. However, later in this video we'll examine evidence that the Grey Ones settled the island while the Maelstrom was still powerful. If this is true, it's likely the Grey Ones arrived on the island soon after the Elder Spawn first retreated to their vaults. The Grey Ones live amongst the impressive ruins of the Southern Island, but they do not appear to have been the original builders of these structures. We'll discuss this in more detail later, but the Grey Ones' creative abilities appear to be limited to crude paintings and rock carvings. They do not even make their own weapons. These are made for them by a group of inhabitants we've not yet discussed, the First Men. Humans descended from those who invaded the island millennia ago to wreak their revenge on the Elder Spawn. When the Tau's gem was rebuilt and the Maelstrom returned, these human warriors were driven to the relative safety of the Southern Islands, where, over many centuries, inbreeding and perhaps the influence of malign magic transformed them into either dwarfish semi-men or lumbering misshapen giants. The First Men mainly dwell on the western side of the Southern Island, the part now known as the Isle of Dusk though there is also a small colony to the east, on the Isle of Dawn. On the Isle of Dusk, the First Men form two distinct communities. Some live in the remains of the shattered citadel, where they worship the horrors of the Maelstrom, appearing to be either the allies or the slaves of these creatures. In contrast, a second group of First Men can be found living in their own communities, where they are apparently free from the influence of the Maelstrom monstrosities. The forges needed to manufacture the obsidian weapons of the Grey Ones are found in the territory of these Free First Men. So is there a connection to be made here? Perhaps the Free First Men fought against the horrors and made an alliance with the Grey Ones who exchanged their aid in battle for obsidian weapons. This might explain why only the horrors of the Maelstrom are found in the mysterious figurines. They are trophies taken in battle. However, an inconsistency in this theory is the fact that some figurines contain warriors of the Silent Legion. These warriors are presumably either the allies or slaves of the Maelstrom monstrosities, but nothing is known that would explain their presence on the island. Giant kings are also found in these figurines, but we'll discuss this later. The unhappy story of the Stygian colony is well documented, thanks to the 24 journal scrolls left behind by Sipta, a scribe and minor magician of the Stygian court who accompanied the expedition to the island. The Stygians sent an expedition to the island for three principal reasons. Firstly, to establish a base to counter the pirate threat, notably that of the Black Corsairs. Secondly, to establish the island as a trading hub for the Stygia merchant fleet. And thirdly, as a project for the Crown Prince of Stygia, one that would keep his troublesome presence from the court. Initially, the expedition started well, and the Stygians made a base amongst ancient ruins, naming their capital New Luxor. Sipsa recognised many of these ruins as being of Acheronian design, but had no clue as to the origin of the Elder Vaults they came across. We should also note that Sipta does not mention the Maelstrom, suggesting that the imperfect gem that energised the tower had, by now, failed completely and left the island at peace. Neither did Sipta mention any sightings of the Elder Spawn at this time, so we can assume that they were unaware of the presence of the Stygians and were still deep in slumber in their vaults. Eager to discover more, Sipta travelled to the island's interior to see the tower, then journeyed west to visit the ruins of Zothel. Here, Sipta read the records of long-dead Acheronian scribes to gradually learn more about the vaults and their construction. Unfortunately, Sipta's studies were interrupted by the murder of the Crown Prince, and this forced him to return to New Luxor, where he found the Stygian settlement in a state of anarchy. Unable to salvage the situation, Sipta had to watch as the Stygian colony collapsed, its people either dying or fleeing in ships, and the only two members of the original expedition left alive on the island were Sipta and his estranged wife. Sipta spent the following months, perhaps years, exploring the island to discover the secrets of the tower, the vaults and the ley shrines. He even managed to penetrate the sealed vaults to seek out the arcane knowledge within. Eventually he accumulated the wisdom and materials he needed to assemble a new gem and take it to the tower. We can only assume that he succeeded in his mission, because the Maelstrom resumed and the Elder Spawn, either roused by the newly energised tower 
or Scepter's intrusion into their vaults, became active once more. As we've already said, the law speaks of a sorcerer who controlled a great storm from his island tower and demanded payment from passing ships, and this could have been no one but Scepter. Much of what we think we know about the history of the Isle of Scepter has to be gleaned from the remnants of the civilizations that have made an impact on the island. The structures of the Elder Spawn are easy to understand in this respect, as there is no ambiguity about them. We know exactly who built them and why, and their ruins are easy to identify. There is a theme common to all Elder Spawn constructions. The stonework of the Elder Spawn is highly finished black basalt, which is then inlaid with gold. And this same theme is repeated in their interior decorations, statues and other items. It's even seen in some armour types. Once you're familiar with this pattern, it becomes obvious which structures on Scepter were built by the Elder Spawn. However, other building traditions are less easy to understand, in particular that of the Acheronians, who appear to have adopted two entirely different building styles. The first style is best exemplified by that found in Zotl, the Acheronian capital. The second style is seen in many other structures on the island, for example in the ruins of New Luxor or the New Kemi docks. Both styles of building are distinct and easily identifiable, but it's not clear why there are two styles in the first place. In the city of Zotl the stonework is dark, bulky and crude, with tall towers dominated by burning beacons. This style is also seen in the raised aqueduct or roadway whose ruins rise above the southern island. This roadway appears to lead to the Forge of the First Men, which is built in the same manner. The only other place this style of building is seen in quantity is around the central tower, where Acheronian stonework surrounds it almost completely. One very distinctive aspect of this design is the statues that feature frequently in the stonework. These hunched figures with their clasped hands will be familiar to anyone who has visited the exiled lands, as they are virtually the same as those seen in the unnamed city of the Giant Kings. The two building styles, that of Zotl and the unnamed city, are extremely similar and feature many of the same motifs. In contrast, the second Acheronian building style is much more attractive, featuring elaborate domes serpentine friezes and gold cladding laid down in a quilted pattern. This style has a Stygian feel to it, which is understandable when we remember that Acheron was founded in part by people from Old Stygia. However, we know it is Acheronian because Scepter identified it as such when he first landed on the island. Also, the structures built by the Stygians currently on the island are mostly made of wood or dried mud. The only masonry they've attempted so far are a few stone lighthouses on the southern island, and these bear little resemblance to the works of the Acheronians. So why are there two different Acheronian building styles? A clue might be found in the proclamation obelisks described earlier. In reference to the city of Zotl, one obelisk says, Behold that which Xanarus has created. Not even the masons of Python could create such a work. What other builder could claim to stand beside him? At first sight this might appear to be Xanarus claiming credit for designing the city. However, what if we take these words literally and Xanarus did, in fact, build the city himself, through sorcery? If so, Xanarus may have deliberately copied the designs of the Giant Kings for some purpose, or he may have used the same source of magic as the Giant Kings and produced similar results. It's even possible the Giant Kings built the city at his request, or that Xanarus himself was a Giant King. Giant Kings do appear to have visited Scepter in the past, as they are found amongst those captured in the mysterious figurines. However, with the information we have, we can do little more than conjecture. One interesting footnote is the fact that the Forge of the First Men is also built in the Zotl style. The Southern Island is the only known source of obsidian, so did Xanarus build a forge there to create obsidian weapons that he hoped would defeat the Elder Spawn, forges that were later taken over by the First Men? Or perhaps Xanarus recruited the First Men as workers, then trained them as armourers to equip his own people, 
This would explain how the first men developed the skill to make obsidian swords and axes. And if Xanarus had placed a taboo on these weapons to avoid rebellion, it would explain why the first men didn't use these weapons themselves, but made them only for the use of the Grey Ones. Speaking of the Grey Ones, the ruins they inhabit also deserve some scrutiny, as the stonework of their temples is unlike anything else seen on the island. It's unlikely the Grey Ones built these structures themselves, otherwise they would have repaired the damage done to some of these buildings, damage presumably caused by the Maelstrom, back when it was powerful enough to scour the land. It's likely this damage was caused by the Maelstrom, because the destruction is worse the further north you go, with many tumbled columns and towers destroyed or pockmarked by the impact of flying debris. In contrast, the buildings on the southern shore of the southern island, those furthest from the tower, are virtually untouched. The only original contributions made by the Grey Ones appears to be their banners and paintwork, and the occasional crude stone carvings. In the Proving Grounds you can see where some of their painted patterns have been damaged by the Maelstrom, which indicates that they must have arrived on the island when the Maelstrom was still strong. The Grey Ones certainly appreciate the destructive power of the tower, and pictures of it appear in their temples, above which are patterns that must represent the Maelstrom itself. The origins of the Grey One ruins must remain a mystery for now, though it's possible that the distant ancestors of the Grey Ones did build them originally, but that their degenerate descendants have now lost their skill in stonework. Let's now look at the current state of the island. The Elder Spawn are awake, but only a few venture outside their vaults, and those do not wander far. Perhaps they're afraid to explore further in case they encounter the free humans who are now plentiful on the island. Despite the loss of the new Luxor colony a generation before, there are many large Stygian bases on Scepter, and their numerous ships are anchored off the southern island. There are also pirates aplenty, nearly all of them belonging to the Black Corsairs, and their many encampments have turned the southwest of the island into their stronghold. Yet more freebooters, merchants and adventurers have established a settlement to the north, a large trading settlement called the Camp of the Castaways. Eldric horrors still fall from the Maelstrom and haunt the shattered citadel, while mutated first men either worship them or keep to their homes. In the south, the mysterious Grey Ones also keep to their ruins, their thoughts and desires unknown, and perhaps unknowable. However, there is yet another group that we've not yet touched on, the Accursed. Men and women who were torn from their mainland homes by the forces of the tower and delivered to the Ley Shrines. Those who did not become the food or slaves of the Elder Spawn made homes for themselves amongst the ruins of Sipta. Most appear to live free, though those inhabiting the accursed citadel are in thralls of the horrors of the Maelstrom, worshipping them as gods, grotesque rites that mimic those of their distant kin, the First Men and the Shattered Citadel. But perhaps we should not be surprised. By all accounts, the accursed have been twisted by the magic of the Ley Shrines, and many of them might not be quite human anymore. But one question to ask is why so many people appear to seek out the island and live there willingly. The storm-swept land would seem to offer few attractions, yet Sipta draws many to its shores, not just the shipwrecked mariners who have no choice but to be there. The answer might lie in the many rusting cages that litter the camps of the island and the ships moored off it. Even the ships wrecked off the coast are heavy with these iron prisons. Could it be that the island is now a giant slave market? That men have learned how to use the lay shrines, and now capture those who are transported to the island against their will? You can even find cages in the camps of the accursed, and many contain prisoners. And why else do the ships of Stygia come to the island equipped with cages, if not to buy fresh slaves for the mainland? We might wonder what Sipta thinks of this state of affairs in his high tower. The law says he's dead and has been so for many years. But who knows for sure? Perhaps his shade watches us still. <laughs>